Widow, bite, monkey. Spider. Spider. Yeah. So this is the remote associations test. It measures your ability to see relationships between things that are only remotely associated. This is Michael from Vsauce 1. And this is Jake from Vsauce 3. Hello. Basically, I say three words and then you reply with a fourth word that links everything together. So for example, okay, good. mouse, blue, sharp. Danger. Oh, you almost said it. I didn't? Yeah. Cheese. Is there a right or wrong answer? Oh gosh, danger works. I mean, I was looking for cheese. So your response is semantically related to those three stimulus words. Mm -hmm. Bald, screech, emblem. Saved by the bell. Eagle. Yes. Chamber, staff, box. Made. Uh, made. <laughs> music? <There's... laughs> oh, it's music, like chamber yeah, music. I was thinking yeah. chamber made. So the way that your brain works when you work these out is that you think of the first word and mm -hmm. you kind of cycle through all of the options for that and then you go to the second yeah. and then you go to the third and then you kind of line up which one's uh, consistent. So there is a right answer. This isn't like so, free, this is like a Rorschach where you're like, what does it say that you think danger is associated with mice? So this is a creativity test. It, it's called a creativity test, but it me measures convergent thinking and not divergent thinking. Oh, interesting. So what, you what, need what to find- What makes it creative if it's convergent? If, in, if everyone has the, the same answer, you're all being creative. It's a good, it's a good point in that you need to find something that best fits all of these things. So I mean, the answer to the first one was cheese, but you said danger still works. Saw, shoulder, sweat. I was gonna say blade, but with that sweat curveball. And not saw as in a tool that you cut but something But saw as in like I saw. No, no, saw as in S-O-R-E. Sore. 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 Wow. Yeah. This changes everything. Cold. It is cold. Well, the Wallach Hogan creativity test mm -hmm. is a divergent thinking test. So out of the box thinking, there's no that. set answers for anything. Okay. And it was created because Wallach and Kogan thought that standardized testing wasn't conducive to creative thinking. And you need to come up with as many items as possible that fit a specific component. Name all the things with wheels that you can think of. Cars, bikes, mm -hmm. tricycles. Wheelbarrow. <laughs> Heelys, uh, electric skateboard, normal skateboard, carriages, skateboards, roller skates, roller blades, uh, cheese, large wheels of cheese. So, th so that's great because you've gone into a different category. So the way that these tests are scored, they, uh -huh. they take into account like transportation as one category, right? And then you're like more creative if you go into say food, which oh, is okay. a category. Uh, I think like a machine might have wheels. Yes, that is so good robots. that you said that because you've moved into a new category. You are all transportation. <clears throat> when you do walk the dog with a yo-yo, it's like a wheel. I would be an answer to that because I'm wheel e smart. Name all the ways that a cat and a mouse are similar. They're both mammals. They have fur. They're animals. They can die. They're furry, for the most part. Uh, Warm-blooded, they give uh, birth to live babies. They uh, have white and red blood cells. They have tails. They breathe oxygen. They are things that I'm not particularly fond of. They, do they give milk? Do, do, do mice give milk to their kids? I'm yeah, sure. Mouse They're milk mammals. is a thing. Um, mouse milk is a thing. Meh. Yeah, no, they neither would survive being shot out of a cannon. Um, would either survive a fallout. <laughs> actually, a, a mouse probably would. A cat would be like, eh. They also have less than 10 letters in their name. They also um, are smaller than planets. Uh, oh, they both like lasagna. Cheese. 
So the Torrance tests mm -hmm. of creative thinking is a group of tests that is the most widely used in testing creative right. potential. So these are a few subtests. Um, it's used in 75% of creativity tests with kids and about 40% of those with adults. All right. What could this be? It could be a star. It could be a, a clock with way too many hands. Or it could be a quasar. It looks kind of like the quasar map that's on the Pioneer hmm. spaceship um, golden golden plate. It does. It could be a little a little uh, butterfly with his wings there, his little uh, little no. sticking out of its mouth. Proboscis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I thought this was a PG show. I was going to say that, but. Some, some kind of geometric solid is viewed from the top, but like you didn't finish those lines. An unfinished shape. Sure, yeah. yeah. This is a fear that this is gonna make me feel like I'm not creative. Like, how, how do you know? Like, what's the judge? What? So what is like, the, oh, you're creative. So what the, the most interesting thing for me about all of these tests is that they were all developed in the 60s or even the 50s, and there's so many of them since then, we still use them. Like, mm -hmm. the Torrance tests are still the most widely used. We haven't found one that is like the grand test of creativity, and also you still need to use multiple tests because there's not one type of creativity. You, know? yeah. you can measure creativity in lots of different ways and you can't really say that one is a lot more reliable than all of the others. How could you make this object more fun? All right, well, I mean, one obvious answer is that it could make noise. Maybe if it talked? I think its eyes could be bigger. Remember, okay, do you remember in the movie Toy Story? There's the doll mm -hmm. head that also has like the weird connect legs movie? Yes. If that had that. It could also be more fun if its colors were less neutral. It could have more glitter. It's got a little glitter on the eyes, have glitter on its body. If it had glitter, sparkles. No, oh, you could put the video game Doom inside of it. <laughs> the camera person just said something like, ooh, what if it flew? And I'm like, no. Because then it's like a mechanical thing. It breaks, you gotta get batteries. And if it actually flew and could carry me off. Like a dragon. Away from this video. If what schools up? were abolished, what would you do to try and get an education? YouTube. Oh dot com slash vsauce one, two, or three, or Braincraft. Libraries, definitely, um, and talking to old people. Yeah, I mean, I think the internet would be the way to do it, or just go out in the world and actually do what we used to do, which was trial and error. Uh -huh. Like, all oh, these mushrooms look delicious, uh, now I'm dead, now the next person knows not to eat those mushrooms. Sure. They've already lived and done so many things, and back before we had even written language, it was the old people that would tell you, oh my gosh, I saw the ocean do that once, there's a, there's a tsunami coming, and you're like, I'm so glad you exist, I can't wait for Wikipedia though. So the way the divergent thinking tests are measured is kind of similar, so there was this psychologist in the 50s whose name was Guilford, and mm -hmm. he was kind of a pioneer in creative thinking tests, and he introduced four elements to kind of measure them, one right. was um, flexibility, which I mentioned, which mm -hmm. is the number of different categories that you can come up with answers to, like transportation or food or thinking or whatever else if you're talking about a wheel. Another <laughs> one is um, fluency, which is just the number of answers that you have. So I would go and like total up your mm. answers and then total up Michael's and like everyone else and I could hypothetically give you a score. Another one is originality, mm -hmm. so each response compared to the total responses from all the numbers of people. So if you gave one response and like 90% of the other people gave it, it's not very original. And the last one is elaboration, which is the amount of detail that you give. So you gave a good one when you said yo-yo, walking the dog with yo-yo, so that's elaborating oh, a lot. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. This was really fun. Thank you. Are we going to shake it? Let's shake hands. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Vsauce you. 3. Thanks for having me. If you don't already, if you want to subscribe to Vsauce 1 or Vsauce 3, the links are down in the description or there's some little boxes here. You can click on some things. And subscribe to Braincraft for more brainy videos every Thursday. <laughs>